because uh, yeah, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and so go ahead, get SolidWorks open, and let me know when you're looking at this screen. Let me the first thing that comes up. Wait until that's popped up on the VR. So initializing on some of the computers here. And look at that. I feel so powerful up here. <laughs> it's nice. It's still loading. Still loading for me. Yeah. All right. And of uh, we got a couple of industrial designers. What kind of majors do we have? Animation, animation. <laughs> Animation. One animation. Yeah. So you were production design. Production design. Anybody, any, uh, anybody online with a major outside industrial? Uh, there are two interiors behind my screen. Oh, wow. all right. Got a couple of our home uh, participants, people watching. All right. Now, if you got this open, go ahead and click on new part. Um, we're not going to mess around too much with measurements, so I'm just going to leave it as IPS and ISO. Uh, we're not 3D printing this, so I don't really care about scale. This is more just for going over some of the tools. So today what we're going to be making is a bottle. It's kind of the uh, best way to just go through a couple of the SolidWorks tools. Uh, and to do that, first thing we're going to want to do before we get into our controls, and you, you're looking at nothing if you've just booted this up. So go ahead over on the uh, left panel. It'll say front plane, top plane, right plane and right click on where it says front plane and click, click on that little uh, eyeball that shows up. And then you can use your scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom out. And this is where we're gonna go over kind of the navigation. So if you got a mouse with a scroll wheel, I hope you do. If you have one of those weird little like Apple ones with just the, the two clicks, you're kind of, this is gonna be tough. <laughs> um, but use that middle click to rotate around. So you click and hold with the middle mouse button That'll let you navigate. Um, it's gonna be a little, and you zoom in and out, you know, scroll wheel. It'll be a little easy to get lost doing this. So if you ever do, just hit your space bar and that'll pull up this. And by clicking on any part of this uh, little cube here, you can reorient yourself. So it doesn't have, we're not gonna have perspective view turned on for the time being. So it's just gonna like, if you notice that it looks kind of weird when you're zooming around at different angles, that's why. Everything is meant to stay completely parallel. You can see when you get those two lines close to each other. So anyways, uh, go ahead and orient yourself with the front of this plane, making sure that you have it visible and we are gonna make a new sketch. To do that, go over here to your sketch tools. It is on the uh, top left of your screen under all these, you'll see these little tabs and go to the sketch one. And the first thing you wanna do is make a line. And so when you click right here on the line tool, which you can also do by pressing L, uh, it's gonna wanna make, make sure that you have a plane selected. So it'll bring up this screen, just click on front plane and click on any two spots, try and make it vertical. Got line, everybody got a line? Great. So now without, I'm just gonna leave that there. You know, it's gonna uh, kind of stick to your mouse, but just go over here to your spline. You can use your spline line. Actually, you know what? I'll go over a couple of these to help us build the profile here. So we have a line here staying in the sketch. Uh, anywhere on this surface, just add a circle and we'll square. Make sure they overlap. And this is where we're going to introduce the trim tool, which is my personal favorite tool in SolidWorks. Right here under sketch, it has trim entities. Little picture of a scissors uh, cutting through a line. And you're going to click on that and that'll pull up a dialog on the left side with corner trim way all these things you don't have to worry about those just click on power trim and once you have that uh pulled up making sure that you got some overlapping shapes in here you can just drag across any lines you want to get rid of and it'll let you create shapes like this so if you wanted to break that do that you can also just use this to erase anything that you end up not wanting so We'll try to go over that one more time, make a circle, make a square, and you can do this anytime you're just laying lines over each other. The power trim just lets you get away, you know, get rid of the flack in there. And once you have a shape with no lines inside it, 
uh, the program will highlight it like this and recognize it as a complete shape. Where do you find the trim tools? So trim tools in that top bar yeah, under sketch. Yeah, trim entities. And it should have power trim automatically selected. Yeah. So then you just click and drag inside the shape and uh, cut away anything you don't want. So, so click inside that circle yeah. and then drag through. Oh, that's yeah. cool. All right. So you've got a couple of the tools here. You got your, uh, those are how you build shapes, lines, and trim. Last one we're going to go over before we do this is the spline. So spline, if you've used like the pen tool in Illustrator, you're familiar with this kind of thing. It's in that same box where the line and shape tools were. Um, and this will let you create all kinds of curved shapes like this. And it'll keep them open until they've been closed off or something like this. You can also, you know, take a line and put it through there if you're not sure how to close it. And then if you were to trim away those parts, there you go. Complete shape. Hey, hey student. All right, open up a computer. Uh, you guys know what to do here. You know these tools already. Do you know how to do the power trim? Oh, so yeah. it works. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, so go ahead. Get into the program. All right. So now using the tools that I just gave you guys and this line you have here where you're still in this sketch, uh, I want you to go ahead and make on one half of this line the shape of a bottle. So picturing that across this line, the other side of the bottle, you know, you wouldn't see just however you want to see the look, water bottle, booze bottle, something fancy through uh, your line tool, your shape tool spline and trim go ahead and go ahead and make just one half of a fancy bottle with this thing being the center axis and make sure that when you do this I'll give you a quick little preview here if it was just something like this that you've trimmed away all this stuff and left yourself with and you'll know that you've done it correctly when you have nothing on the other side of this line and nothing sticking out from here. You just got this shape right here. Bless you. So go ahead and get creative with it. If you have any, uh, need any help, uh, let me know. And in a few minutes, I'll come by and check on you guys and we'll get to the next shape of how we're going to make this 3D object. Let me see what you're doing. <laughs> And you can just use the trim tool anytime you need to delete anything you want off that screen. That's what I'm here for. All right. So it's got a good question. Uh, we're going to go over what you want to do if you have a shape that without deleting and restarting, you just want to move. So keeping everything in these sketch tools here, <laughs> you can hit um, move entities, which is right over here in this little menu. And that'll let you drag this stuff around. That's just not super intuitive. It's not like just having an arrow tool, but I'm sure they have their reasons. Yeah, you gotta keep it all in one sketch. Um, the great thing about this software. Can you use the center one line or just an offline? I just used a regular line. I would grab the order of operations and go back to previous set step. Yeah. And then go back and it'll fire everything else with you. Oh really? Jonathan. We're gonna go over that. Okay. Yeah. Don't go over it much better. Uh yeah. So what we're designing this, I'll tell you guys a couple things about SolidWorks. And one of the big ones is that it's basically designed with time travel. Uh, which means that 
you'll notice when you're you know not working on any of these things right here you've got this little timeline oh we lost another one jesus that must be really boring no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> um over here on this left side you got this like right here underneath origin you have your timeline of things you've made so right now it's it's pretty limited you just have a sketch um but eventually and it's got a stoplight because still in progress but eventually you know when you've made this a full-sized uh product you're gonna have a whole bunch of things in here and what's great about that is that you can drag this line up and down to go back and forth through your timeline. Uh, and you can kind of see where you were at different points in the project. And not only can you look at that, but you can edit them. And you gotta be careful because you know, it's like messing with a timeline. If you go and mess something up that other things were reliant on, you're gonna break your whole flow. Uh, and we'll go over that a little bit more when we actually have a 3D model built, but it does give you a lot more kind of freedom with the design. You're not just hitting like undo, undo, undo. You can go back to specific points, edit something, and see how that affects the whole timeline going forward. So I'm going to build myself a little, little shape here. I just in front of it. I'll make mine a little bit concave at the bottom. And let's just trim some of this stuff away. All right. So uh, other thing, just make sure that while you're doing this, that center line stays intact. And in a couple minutes, we're going to move on and take another look around and we'll move on to the next step. Hello, Quint. We lost a few of our online people, uh, but we still got the ones that matter. <laughs> All right. All right, so how's everybody doing with their shape? shape look the cooler it's going to look when we give it that three dimension yeah a lot of there's a lot of things in the ux that come up just for the sake of it's a super technical program so there's a lot of things in there that are just more for the dimensions when you're going to actually like fabricate these things but for our purposes right now we don't have to get into them Mr. Teacher, sir. Uh -huh. So when I'm making this form, is it possible if I decided it's going to be too wide to just stretch the whole thing? Is there like a way that I'd be able to do that without redrawing stuff? Or should I just grab points for uh right now? We'll just grab this. Okay. Is there like a tool that we did? Yeah, I I haven't either. So kind of like that. So there's times that it would have been easier to just stretch stuff that yeah. Like when you're in like building assemblies, there's also a lot more you can do in terms of editing those things. But we won't be getting the assemblies today. Yeah, we, we're getting there in our class currently. Like, yeah, so. so we're just going to go over putting everything into one part. Uh, otherwise, we go over mates and all that stuff. All right, online people, person, no person with two people with them. How's your bottle coming? Um, it would be better if I had downloaded SketchUp before this, but. <laughs> we're planning on going to Gulfstream, so this is more just like I mean the, the interface is very similar to Revit, mm -hmm. so we're just kind of getting familiar. Okay, uh, so you're just there to watch. Yeah, just go draw it on a piece of paper. It'll just uh, great. Yeah, 
We'll improv. But okay, good to know. Around this thing, let me uh. Once you're done with your form, just trim off a little bit at the top and bottom. Looks like Jonathan's already got this done so that you have this one shape. To do that, you just kind of cut off the little bits, poking out the top. Hey Carter, yeah. the thing you were asking about, by the way, it's a. Uh, we'll just do it on two corners on mine, but it'd be this tool, and you enter the parameters in there. Okay. Maybe do something like this. I'll finish the three D part or the the top one three D, but that's how you would do it. Yeah, totally. So go ahead, right click on your sketch and go into edit. As long as you're not in the sketch, or you're already in the sketch view, looks like you might be. Yeah, I think Great. So then just go here uh, under the sketch tools, sketch fillet right here, that ninth one in the box of nine, and click on a corner. It'll pull up a dialog where you can enter a number. Great. <laughs> See, a lot of the tools super similar to Illustrator. I'm gonna go help a couple online people or on ground people. Make sure we're here. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. 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 So on to the next step here, we're going to bring this little half shape here we got into a full 3D form. To do that, you should go over to features, click this one, second from the right, revolve boss base. Um, so first thing it's gonna, it's gonna auto highlight axis of revolution. Uh, ignore that for now, click on selected contours and just click on this guy right here. Whatever your shape is, keep that highlighted. And then go back up to axis revolution and click on this little line, the one you got in the middle. Now, take a look at that. Make sure you like the way it looks. It should be set to 360 degrees by default. And uh, it shouldn't be a thin feature unless your thing is open. And if it is, you're going to want to go back in and fix your sketch. But it looks like we all got nice closed sketches. So, with that as it is, hit the check mark. And you've got yourself a 3D shape there. So this is the beginning of our bottle. Let's see. How we doing? Got it. Very nice. All right. Alright, so now uh, everybody stuff's looking good. Looks like we mostly got curved shapes in here. <laughs> Very nice. Let me see the bottom. <laughs> All right. Good. Um, people online, this one making sense so far? Yep. Perfect. Exactly what I want to hear. All right. So that feature I mentioned before was the, now that we're out of the sketch tools, we're going to be mostly using things here in features. So this is for messing with your three-dimensional forms. And one of them is the favorite one. You want to make any of your stuff look, uh, excuse me, <laughs> uh, anything you want to really appeal to a professor with, the filleted edges go a long way. So you just click on that tool. This, if you have any hard edges still in your object, click on that and just click on where you want to do it. If you click on a surface, it'll just add any curves touching it to that, but we'll just click on this little edge here. Make sure it has full preview if you're not seeing anything yet. And then you can adjust the uh, size of that right here. So you need to go up and down by full units, but that jumps by like, depending on how, made you, how big you've made this thing, it might be too big of a jump. So you can just manually enter that and get whatever kind of dimension you want there. 
You know, they've got a nice bottle with some good curvatures on it. Good looking shape overall. We all happy with our forms? Yep. Yep. All right. And whenever you're done with that uh, feature, just hit the check mark and it'll apply it. Okay. So now we've got a basic bottle shape. But of course, this thing can't hold anything. It's, you know, one big solid unit. So to fix that, we got a wonderful little feature here that uh, SolidWorks offers called the shell tool. It's right over here. It's this one that looks like a little armchair in that features menu. Over here on the right, past the uh, top bar menu, we get shell. And you click on the face that you're going to want to be the open one. So we'll click on the top, unless you've got some very creative bottle. Um, hit show preview. And then looking at this, you're going to want to make sure your shell walls, that's what those yellow lines are. That's something that's uh, going to work with the geometry. If you make them too thin, it'll mess up. If they're too thick, they'll just kind of intersect with each other. But doing that, so it'll give me a weird thing like this. But sometimes you can just kind of ignore that if it's uh, if you're not 3D printing it. And as long as it isn't too egregious, that you can see it there. So anyways, uh, you can kind of get an idea of what this looks like in the view I have it in now. But to really understand how this thing works, I'm going to click on, you guys don't, well, yeah, I guess it's a good one to know. And this little menu that's actually on your screen, uh, which is just for how you're viewing the model, the section view will automatically show you. It'll start at the halfway point and it will just show you a uh, preview of what your device looks like, your object looks like cut in half. So here you can actually get a good idea of what the walls of this thing are. Yep, I'm stuck on this stuff right here. So I got the top for you. So show, show. Uh, it looks like a problem. It's just it's probably yeah. So start with point one. Oh, okay. So that's what you fix up. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. So now we get a little bit of the section view. Yeah. So that's what you're showing. It's really cool. You can drag this all the way up on the big screen. So I love about the section view too, just a great like great view of your uh, product. You can drag this thing back and forth. You can rotate it. And you can just it'll basically just cut off your product wherever you have this thing. It doesn't actually do anything to the model. This is purely for viewing purposes. Everything on this menu is for viewing. Um, so, you know, you can rotate it around. You can give it kind of like a little, really nice for getting some uh, preview renders too. For people. I know a friend of mine who just took this, uh, their SolidWorks class recently, did a super, super detailed interior on their model and they use this tool to kind of show that off especially if you kind of drag it, you know, back and forth on there. Just a real little showy thing. Anyway, to turn that uh, turn that off, you just hit this X, get rid of that, and you are back to your modeling stage. All right, so assuming we all have functional, yep. For some reason, and I think it's because my model is way too small, the shell command is really bugging out when I try and use it. Yeah, so when that happens, go ahead and the, I'll edit my shell. No, so just make like just mess with your parameters here until it gives you a width. You can see, make sure show preview is on. Yeah, I, I was doing that, and the only ones that would work, there would be this extrusion line. I don't know, I didn't change it. I need point one. I've never, never seen it do that because I've used a shell pan before and never had it. So if you zoom out, it infinitely goes up to okay. very, very small. Yeah. yeah. What, what did you what, what number you put you know, like it? Because it was wow. <laughs> very, very thick, fragile bottle. Yeah. I guess I accidentally scrolled in a bunch yeah. when I was oh, in the model. Yeah, it's, 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 it's Since we're just doing this for artistic purposes, you don't have to worry about those dimensions. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. That's more, you know, just for actual fabrication. But yeah, it is only an important thing to keep in mind when you're building relative dimensions so that all this stuff yeah. works. So anyways, we got our bottle nice and uh, get new systems.
you guys were, we're trying to make it sense, but I think it's still good to see that. So just kind of. I don't think there's a sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we had a um, issue with the student where it wasn't shelling for some reason. It's giving like a strange thing about there being existing geometry. So if you get something like that, cancel this. Uh, you just want to open up your section view and make sure it's not already hollow because then it'll create an issue. And if it is, then you can just go into your shell here in your timeline edit that and click which faces you want to remove. So for example, if I wanted to change this bottle so that that's no longer the top, I can delete that, do this, and then, well, that would be the new uh, open face of the bottle. Here we go. Looks like everybody, well, hold on, what is that? Uh, Roman and Jonathan, you guys got it? Yeah, uh, you didn't make sure. his legs straight. So that's why it's crooked. I thing. thought it was straight. Apparently, it was just ever so slightly crooked. That was what was messing a lot of it up. Okay. Yeah. Like you can zoom in infinitely and not see that it's not straight, though. Yeah. So just to just use the smart guides. And I did. Yeah. <laughs> that's why they call them that. Yeah. I'm not feeling very smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I am. Uh, you guys think we're going to move on to the next step? Yeah. I, I know how to do this. Okay. Don't worry cool. about me. All right, so now that we've got a little bottle, we are gonna go ahead and make a cork. And to do that, we're gonna take that top plane here, same thing we did at the beginning with the front plane, and we're gonna make that visible. That's how you can see both of those. Click on this, it starts a little sticky. Uh, go ahead and hold down the control key. When you get this little arrow thing, click on it and drag. And if it doesn't immediately move with your mouse, just keep dragging until it pops into place and put this right about the ridge there. Now you can do this by entering exact reference points and things to, you know, make it perfectly precise, but we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to put it, kind of guesstimate where the top of that is. And we're going to use that plane to start building our cork. All right, so now that we have this plane visible, we can get rid of that top plane. And going back to what I said before, you can tell here now with that, where that plane is that this thing is later in the timeline because so if I had set a reference to something like, instead of dragging it up by hand, set like drag up to this point, and then I deleted the shape, that's where the whole timeline thing would start coming into play. So it'd say, you know, this thing's assigned to a point that no longer exists. We won't worry about that right now. So in this, uh, this, this part can get a little bit, it's a little sticky. So I'm gonna make sure we all get through this properly. Okay. Okay. Uh, set the plane, straight up. Go ahead and hide the top plane. The one that's called top plane, not the new plane that's made it on top. 
<laughs> all right, so all my industrial design students here, they're lagging behind. You guys are getting crushed by this animation major. <laughs> all right, so go over, go back to your view, make sure your top plane is visible, and then holding down control, click on that, drag it up to the top. <laughs> All right. We're not going to get exact. Just put it right about at the lip of your bottle. Because okay. we're going to use that to make our cork. Right. Are you showing off my work? No. <laughs> Quint is here giving a lesson in my portfolio. All right. Looks like you guys got it. All right. All right, now hide the uh, original top plane. So you just have that one up on top. You got it. Perfect. Okay. So now in that space bar, we're going to go back to this view and we're going to look at this thing from the top. You're going to create a little circle using that sketch tool. It's going to ask you what plane you want, unless you already have this one selected. But we're putting that on this top plane here and click it from the center out to about the rim of that bottle that you built, just a little bit inward of it, and add a circle. So you should be looking at something like this. I'll go over that one more time. Uh, exit sketch. I delete this. I oh, know. Okay. So nothing selected. I'm hitting sketch this plane. The one you guys just built. And I'm using from the center point out to about the rim of that bottle just before it, making a circle like that. Got it. All right. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look. All right. Great. So now that we got that, I'm going to go back to our features. We're going to use this big one right up here. It's one of the most common tools you use in uh, SolidWorks. It is extrude boss space that circle selected. So it'll bring up a little preview like this. Just go ahead and drag that arrow down about as deep as you want this thing inside the bottle. Making sure it's not intersecting with any of the geometry. And again, set it under time. So we're just kind of doing this by hand. So otherwise we would bring this down, you know, set a reference point here, but we'll just do it by the offset. And where here where it says merge result, make sure that is not checked. Otherwise it's going to kind of just going to mix these into one shape so you'd have an unopenable bottle. So drag that as deep as you want. You can see the preview here. And once you have that where you want it uh, and you've made sure that merge result is not checked, change the screen check mark up top and you'll have this new shape. And once you do, you're going to go into your solid bodies in that menu over here. And this one called shell, which is your bottle, it's going to hide that. So that is this big menu right here on the left. Shell is the shape name for your bottle. Just names it. You can rename them, but it'll auto name them after the last thing you did to it. And you're going to right click it and you're going to click, click that eye so it's hidden. So now all you're looking at here is your core. Just going to make things easier. All right. So this is the part that's inside the bottle. And from here, using some of these tools, just you guys can get a little bit creative. So use this as your plane. It's the same thing this was built on. I'm going to make it come out a little further. Maybe build this thing up. So we've got kind of a little shape like this. And here when it says merge result, you can leave that on because if you look at what it's going to bind to, it's only going to be the visible shapes. But if you're worried about it, where it says auto select at the bottom, this is uh, brings up a menu to let you click what this thing merges with. 
this with the beginnings of our little shape here. Do you guys remember how to fill it edges? You know, you can go in here, round this out. A little smoother. Leave it like that. Apply the same thing. And you can see over here on the left, all of your, all these things you do are building into that timeline. So it's going to get longer and longer. And this is where that little dragging this thing back up and down, like I mentioned before, shows you the different stages to your design. Uh, but yeah, get this to kind of a place where you want it. This will be the base, the cork for your bottle. And once we have that down, we are going to add a little intricate crystal on the top. The first thing to make sure we do is get a little a shape that we like looking at. So I'm going to do a multi fillet here. I'm going to click on a few of these edges. And if at any point when you're trying to mess with this stuff, you click on something and all of these disappear, that's the program's way of telling you that uh, your current selection just it's not going to work like the size the radius you have picked is too big so you'll notice it happens when i click on this one that's because there's not enough room on this plane for two fillets so if i unselected that one it would allow that through about this if i were to lower this to let's say 0.04 because these don't intersect it would let me curve that whole thing like this all right so i've got a shape I'm happy with here Let's take a look, see how everybody's doing. Yeah. A little behind her. So okay. I, I got the cap on. Yeah, I'm sure you had that problem. Oh. The solid bodies. Oh, there you go. See how they go. So if you wrench these closely, you get that merge result. Yep. Make sure that's unchecked. Oh. So that keeps it from binding with anything it touches. Yep. There's probably a big curve here. It probably cuts inside that a little bit. Okay. But we won't worry about it. So it's just unchecked. And then I'm going to so it's all So two of us are going to try to decide what I'm going to do. Yep. 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 favorite examples just so we get an idea of what we're looking at here is I hope I'm allowed to show this um so you look some fancy bottles like this you'll notice you know there's your bottle shape that's the cap and then they got something fancy resting on top of it is that cap like a shelf glass that cap is its own bottle <laughs> right I love this thing Favorite kids. If you ever get a chance to get this stuff, definitely do. Um, so that has liquid in it, so you can yeah, it and a separate cap that's inside that. Like really right? Yeah. So you don't waste anything. You have. Um, you always have a little extra. When you're done with the ball, you got a little bit more. <laughs> All right. So here's we're going to go ahead and add our little crystal. So go back to this view using your space bar. And either using your polygon tool or your line tool, selecting the front plane, which will automatically put it on the middle, you know, this bottle thing. Make yourself some kind of geometric form that uh, intersects 
just barely with that cap. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this polygon tool and put it like that. So you can see, we go from the side, you can see that this thing intersects with our cap here. Turn this back around. And this will be the basis for your 3D form. And I'm gonna check that off. And we're gonna go over the double extrusion once you guys have this. So again, you're making this on the front plane. You're gonna to wanna to make sure at least one part of it intersects with this thing. And now we're going to do the, as we've done before, the extrude. Now you'll notice, of course, it just goes out from one side of your shape. Uh, Cause right here, it says direction one. So go ahead and check direction two. Automatically, it should make it whatever the width you have entered already is. But don't check this off yet because we're not gonna merge it with anything. Make sure that's turned off and we will have ourselves a little three-dimensional geometric form. Pretty basic, but I'll show you how we're gonna make that a little more exciting. So you should have three solid bodies at this point if you've gotten all these things right. And we're going to uh, go ahead and hide that other one, which if you fill it at the edges, it'll be called fill it. If you just extruded it, it'll be called that. If you wanna get in and name them, go ahead. Are we turning off? Off. Because off. Off. Okay. we're going to edit this thing on its own. Okay. So to do that, once you guys have this little shape and you got everything else hidden, we're going to make one face of it normal to camera. And to do that, you just click on any flat face, ideally one on the X, Y axis. And this little thing that looks like an arrow coming out of a plane that's in that top dialog there, uh, this will automatically make something face to face with your camera. So if I did it at that angle, it would do that one but we want to get it from the side. And then we're going to pull up our sketch again. And this time you don't have to make a new plane because it's just going to use that side you selected as your plane. And what we're going to be doing, if you've ever used Illustrator and you've used the subtract two objects thing, you're familiar with this, you're going to build the shape that you want to cut this thing out of. So if you want to take like, uh, build something in the center and we're going to put something around it and subtract that whole thing, I'll show you how to do it. But I'm going to, let's say, mirror this exact shape and just create something like this. So you'll notice it fills itself in shape like this. Uh, and if I drag this whole thing around that, which I'll go back over this in a sec, just to show you what it's going to look like. We just click this. We drag this through and it creates this kind of this whole shape, anything within this yellow box will be deleted and you'll end up with something like that. So I'll go over that again. We're going to let me delete that feature. Looking at this, now let me delete that sketch too. Make some plane of it normal through viewport. Build a shape that you want to cut out from the other side. You already built one from either your X or Y side, now we're doing the other one. So I'll just do this again, little voice crack in there. And it doesn't have to be clean, it's a crystal. No, you're gonna do it with a rectangle to select that whole thing. I'm going to go features, extruded cut, making sure whatever you click here is what it's going to use as the cutting tool. I'm gonna to drag that across that whole part. And assuming that your cork is still visible, this won't affect it. But if it is visible, you can kind of, uh, when it pulls up that menu like this, you select which parts you want it to cut in this box right here. All right, so now we've got another little shape. And we can go ahead and make all of our things visible again. And you've got the kind of a boring looking gray version of what your bottle will be. Now to add a little bit of intricacy here, I'm gonna show you a trick that I just love doing. Um, it's a really easy way to add some detail to a project. If you go on one of the shapes you already have, let's use the cork here. Yeah. Yeah. So go to features. 
we'll do this one you do uh, and hit exterior cut and then click inside this box. Yeah. And then don't do auto select. Make sure you click on the screen thing. You click on the auto select. Oh, it's all on the board. Well, it should be all just the other one. And use your middle mouse to get a better angle on this. And just drag that arrow all the way to this screen. Like all Hit the, yeah. Oh, I wonder if it's open share. Uh, here. Here. All right. I guess you got this a bit here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I can't cut my thing again because I'm even aware of what this thing is. Let's let it work. Yeah. 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 Um, it did only select, maybe they were on different yeah. planes, but it only selected square. So yeah. it didn't make sure it also selected the crystal inside. So it would use it as one big window. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll be over here. Doing the same, the same problem she does. Yeah. So what you're doing right now is you are subtracting a, you're just subtracting this um, this hexagon from there. Yeah. yeah. What you want to subtract yeah. is not this hexagon, but yeah. everything except for it. So you yeah. add a square around it, uh, and then do extrude. You can select this new shape you've created that is a box without a hexagon. Yeah. Right make a big box. Like that over there. Yeah. This time. Uh, oh, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. All right. How are we all doing? Good, good, good. Okay. So, for anyone who's uh, got this part down, uh, hold on one second. Let me just take it. Is this uh, got that in the center? No, uh, it's in the center. Perfect. Yeah. I just had a weird view on that. Uh, I'll show you guys a little trick I just love using. It's not necessary to your SOLIDWORKS education, but every time I've built this into a project, the teachers love it. So you click on any one of these uh, rims here and using something called the, where'd you go? The swept boss base which is what you would use normally to select a shape and any kind of spine uh, and drag that shape across it like you were making a pool noodle. You can just click on this with an existing rim. Clear that. Circular profile, because sketch profile is for when you want to use a custom shape. Circular profile will just add a circle to it. Then you select the path for it, and you can add like a little tube to any uh, existing line on a surface in your shape. So I'll make this one a little bit smaller. You know, you can see we've got this kind of added element of complexity. You can even add it to something on here. Maybe. Um, sometimes it gets a little weird with corners, but if you were to go circular profile and just select this as your path, yeah, you can see it'll do that kind of thing. Or, you know, I'll select this one, do that one instead. So just a nice little way of adding some tubing little details, hedging to something. Yeah. All right, so now we've got this uh, well where we should be. We should have a boring looking gray bottle. Everybody got a boring looking gray bottle? Quint? So we are going to get into the appearance menu. And making sure all these things are visible. So we got the stuff we're going to be working with. Let me drag this out of the way. 
this is what I really love about SolidWorks. Great fabrication program, but as someone who used to have a really cheap laptop that couldn't run Keyshot, the in-house rendering thing on this saved my life. So we'll go into, you got two menus here, and those are scenes and appearances. And we're gonna start out with appearances. So just click on that drop down menu. We got all these ones pulled up, everything from plastic, and each one of these expands <coughs> to metal, to glass, solids, lights, organic things. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and hide this for a second. And the first one we're gonna apply, you're gonna to get to get creative with this, but there's just one I want you guys to start with, which is go under. Good. All right. Here, before we do, just so we make sure this one's starting to fly. Get everything. Yep, perfect. All right, so go to appearances, drop that menu down, scroll all the way down to where it says organic, and then where it says wood, and then where it says patterned composites. Click on this one that says oriented strand board and drag this onto your cork and it'll before don't move the mouse once you do it because and make sure you drag it onto the cork part if you have to hide the bottle go ahead it'll pull up this little weird menu um, if you move the mouse off it'll just cancel the operation so this is going to basically ask you do you want to apply it to this face this feature or this whole body so i'm going to apply it to this feature the extrude and then i'm going to apply it to this little filleted edge So I'll leave these ones as, are, as they are. And if you're having trouble accessing any of these parts, just go ahead and hide in your solid bodies, hide uh, the shell or the sweep or the, you know, whatever your last move was. All right, so now that you've got that one done, just go ahead and uh, mess around with these. You can take a look at, you got things like glass, glass, you can do like a nice kind of, uh, sandblasted or textured glass. I know Quint loves those, especially his frosted glass. You can take something like, whatever this is, apply this here, to this whole body. Uh, you could apply metal, wood, you can make this thing gold, you can go with the gemstones under organic. But just mess around with those so you find one you like. I'm good, take a look at what you're doing. So, which one is it again? That's what you do. So, I show for a second. I'm going to mess around with these a little bit. We got our metals here. Try some gold. You know, and, and uh, for every single material, they got a whole range of possibilities. And if you're not satisfied with the ones they have, all these things can be edited like uh, directly through menu too. So if I go into my, you know, I have to worry about messing with this, but if you thought this was too shiny, under the appearance menu, normally you have the part and features menu here. Uh, but under the appearance menu, you could like drop this down, see what it's applied to, and actually edit all these all these details: your specular lighting, your color, you know, what you want it to kind of gradiate between. This is like the really complicated appearance menu stuff, which you only have to worry about when you're getting once you've got like a nice finished model and you're just really trying to get it ready for presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at our let's see. Under organic, when you get to your uh, gemstone, little gemstones thing right here under organic, you know, garnet, ruby, sapphire, quartz, emerald. But I'll go with, all right, let's take a look and let's try emerald. But the whole body. Also, when you apply to the whole body of something, it will ignore any features you've already applied something to. 
So I'm just going to apply it to this extrusion. Then we'll go under our woods. Uh, and like I said, each one's got a bunch of different ranges. When you just click on wood, it gives you this kind of like quick menu. But if you click on the individual ones, you'll get to take a look at just mahogany, everything from polished to unfinished, satin finished. So I'll apply that to the rest of this feature. And let's see, I'll put it on this filler edge too. And okay, that actually is missing them. There, make sure when you apply it to something that you've done a few things to that you have it like here. I've only applied it to the extrusion. So you'll see this side does not have any texture on it. So I'm going to go into back into organic, back to my gemstones, and apply emerald to that whole cut. And now that whole thing is what we want. Because it's intersecting, this is transparent. You run into some issues there, but you know. Nothing we got to worry about now. You're not selling this. Here you go. These are the beginnings of our. Uh, this is kind of, yes, yeah, so you got like a nice looking, fully built and textured object. And the last thing we'll do once everyone has these ready is we'll go over quick rendering. And you'll have a nice little picture you can take home. So go check on the class. You guys got everything so far? How's this going? for our online students. Good, that's what I like to see, all right. So when you delete some things, you see the this bolt, then she tells you if you would fix them off that swoop, it would say, yeah, be careful about deleting this because all these other things are based on that. And then you can go in and correct those, right. change what they're relying on, but you got nothing to worry about. And then it's also going to a nice looking either a gemstone or a glass or something. And then it's not one of the things I've some fun new textures to it. I'll just give up. I wanted, what I wanted to do was create a cut and then um, mirror it so that I would do the cut three different times. So when I was having a hard time mirroring on a yeah. You know what I mean? It was, I could have redrawn each time. Yeah. And then, yeah. 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 Well, I think I was trying to cut from the middle on there. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to do something that complicated. It's like a fun little part. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. 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 Some textures applied to your model before we go and render this thing. We're going to do the other part of that appearance menu that we saw before, which is scenes. I'm going to drop down menu here, basic scenes, studio scenes, presentation. These will, a lot of these are either straight colors or um, kind of a kind of panoramic view of some setting. They have default ones. You can always add more on your computer at home. Um, We'll go ahead and apply something like a like the courtyard background. Hit yes, and it will automatically apply this little background that you'll view in your rendering. So we could use the good one to do for the bottle is the kitchen background. You can kind of place this thing on the uh, countertop here. Find the view you want. There we go. Good. I can put this right there. And again, it's you know not placing it in a real space. It's just using this as a visual approximation. So you're going to kind of have to mess around with getting this at the angle you want and not looking like it's gigantic or super tiny. This, for whatever reason, seems to be appearing at a, an odd angle. But 
that's just something you mess with here. And always you can reset yourself like that. Put it over there. And once we have that in a place we want it, we will go to, if you don't have this render tools tab, you should have it. But if you don't, go to SolidWorks add-ins and click on Photo View 360. And that will make sure that you have this tab added. All right. And all right, so uh, series of SolidWorks add-ins. Okay. All right. And then hit Photo View 360. It's right next to the front load. And for everyone else, uh, you got it. Yeah, and how do you do the background? Background, under that same appearance menu, do scenes instead of uh, color or under instead of appearance and just drag any of these in there. And then we go back to our render tools and just hit preview window. It'll give you this little pop-up dialog, add a camera, turn on perspective. I'll just turn on perspective since we have nothing more to add to this. Um, I'll freeze up for a second. These computers aren't perfect. So it'll take a little while, but from here, it'll just start rendering your thing. And it only has to perform a major render once, uh, then we'll get into the cool little live feature thing it has. All right, so let me come check on what you guys are doing. So, so I'm gonna be, I took out because I want to do the gym today. I work at five, so I gotta go like now. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Tomorrow. Yeah. Well, it takes one hour for the day. I'll still go tomorrow as well. Thank you, Sammy. through these things it'll take a while Ramon seems to have worked I just um yeah it took like two minutes of it just not responding and it just suddenly popped up yeah that's pretty much how it goes but once it does once it pops up uh you will have access to a little as soon as mine comes up I'll get to show you a little bit of the live rendering which is my favorite features here there we go all right so if you take a look at my screen, you can see this thing rendering in real time. And then just drag it out and try to do it multiple times. Um, I can actually go back in here and put this thing, you know, wherever I want it. And you'll see this thing will then catch up with what I'm doing. And there is our little render. So the reason we use that composite wood texture for the cork, I think it is the best one to get this effect. You can see it, even though it shows up flat when you're building the model, it is, you know, uh, bump mapping, a little bit of specular lighting, kind of gives you that little cork look that you want. You can also see that it uh, just kind of corrects for wherever you put this thing in the scene. So if you put it somewhere like this, it's going to look like a gigantic bottle compared to if you put it here. Both look pretty real, but it's kind of a matter of scale. So, like I said, you're not placing it in a real scene, it's visual approximations. So, just use that to kind of get, yeah. And then, once you have this render or this window pulled up, you can also go in and change things like the scene that you added. You could add a uh, courtyard scene back. Take a second, but there it is. 
And yeah, there's your little render of your bottle that you have made in SolidWorks. So studio scenes, you know, realistic backgrounds, whatever you want. It'll apply all these things to the reflections on the uh, metal and crystal parts of this. Um, and when you want to export one of these, you go ahead and you hit final render instead of preview window. It'll take a little bit longer. You've got a nice looking render and you can export that with or without the background. If you take a look around the room, you see these, the drop shadow and everything's already added in. And you can just Photoshop that into whatever presentation image you want to use. So I'll throw in a little orange background here, put a bottle like this. And there's my bottle. Thank you. Look at the big screen. <laughs> no, but clearer screen. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna apply. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. You can do that in Windows Phone. Uh, oh yeah. Oh. All right. Thanks for uh, thanks everybody for coming. <laughs>